Section 12, pull and junction box sizing, Canadian Electrical Code Part 1. In this presentation, we're going to be looking at Rule 12, 30, 36. Pull and junction boxes. Now, pull boxes are installed to assist with the pulling of conductors into the conduit system, and they're not used for splices. Pull boxes are used when conduit bends exceed 360 degrees in the raceway system, or when the conduit transitions to a different plane, or sometimes we just put them in for convenient pulling locations as required. Junction boxes, on the other hand, are used for splices. Now, for both these types of boxes, we're going to use 12, 30, 36. And uh, if we take a look at each one of the rules, uh, several one is simply stating that if you have a cable and you, the cable is entering into a box, you need to take into account the size of the cable entry, and that would be the cable connector itself. And so they're trying to distinguish between just taking a tape measure to the cable and actually what is the size of the knockout that the cable connector is going to use, like a tech connector or a BX connector, something like that. Now, several two is probably of the most importance. And that's because it states that this rule is only used if you're using insulated conductors that are number four or larger. That means if you're using conductors smaller than number four and you need a pull box or a junction box, you're going to go to 12, 30, 34. Now, Junction boxes are laid out into uh, three different types. We have A, B, and C. A is when a raceway or cable enters the wall of the box opposite a removable cover. B is for straight pulls. And C is for angle or U-pulls of cable. So if we take a look at some diagrams of what that could look like, on the left, a side view is of a uh, box with a removable cover, and the conductor is coming into the back wall of the box opposite the removable cover and exiting out the bottom. A U-pull has two conduits on the same wall of the box. Straight pull has uh, very little bend to the conductor and they enter opposite walls of the box. And an angle pull uh, enters into one wall of the box and then leaves an adjacent side. So in this situation, it's, en it's entering the side and leaving the bottom. Let's first start with the simplest of pull boxes and that's a straight pull box. A straight pull box is going to be using separal two item B. And it says for straight pulls, the length of the box needs to be at least eight times the tray diameter of the largest raceway or equivalent cable. So if we take a look at a 3N GMT entering into that straight pull box, that means that the dimension identified by the red arrow is going to need to be at least 24 inches. There is no other dimensions that are calculated within the scope of 12, 30, 36 for this type of pull box. The width of the box would have to be at least three inches because it's a three inch diameter conduit. And of course, probably a little bit wider than that, simply because you need to put on lock rings. Now, if we take a look at this installation, this is a uh, entry into the back wall opposite a removable cover of a box, and it's also an angle pull. And there are three distinct and separate calculations that the code will require. A is the depth of the box. B is the length or height of the box. And C has to do with the distance between the nearest edges of the two knockouts that we will be cutting into the box. So they're going to tell us how close those knockouts can be. In order to complete this calculation, we're going to use item A and item C. Item A is going to refer us or calculate the depth of the box. Item C is divided into two separate items. So Roman numeral one, this has to do with the length of the box. That's dimension B. Roman numeral two has to do with the knockout location. And that's, we can read here, have a distance as measured in a straight line between the nearest edges of each raceway or cable entry. So it's referring to the entries. So one is the length of the box, two is the distance between the knockouts. Let's see what those calculations then look like. Well, it looks like uh, depth is six times the conductor diameter plus the conduit diameter. This one down here, dimension B, is simply six times the conduit diameter. And here, C, that is also six times the conduit diameter. And that's because we don't have any additional conduits on those walls of the box. So it's just in one end, out the other. And we'll see a couple of different situations where that differs. Now, where are we going to get the diameter of the conductor? Well, we're going to go to table 10, either A, B, C, or D, depending on what type of conductor we're using. And in this situation, it uh, looks like we're going to need the diameter. And the diameter is the far left-hand column of each grouping or classification of insulation. So it would be that one right there. 
Now, sometimes what we're going to find is that we're given a imperial uh, inches dimension for the conduit and our uh, diameter of our conductors is given in millimeters. That would be metric. So it's easiest to convert the imperial uh, dimension of the conduit to metric. And we can find that in page 35, 36, near the beginning of the code book, where it has a metric designator. And we see all the different uh, standard sizes of conduit here. An inch and a quarter would be a 35 millimeter conduit. All right, well, let's apply some numbers to this example and see how everything flushes out. So we've got a pull box here where we're entering in from opposite removable cover, and we've got three 250 KC mil RW90 600 volt unjacketed conductors. And uh, the first calculation we're going to focus then on is doing the depth of the box. And in order to do the depth of the box, I need to convert 3 inch EMT to metric. And I also need to know what the millimeters diameter is of a 250 KC mil RW90 600 volt unjacketed conductor. So I'm going to be going to uh, table 10A to find that millimeters, which is 17.9. And I go to the beginning of the code book to find that a 3 inch EMT is equivalent to a 78 millimeter conduit. So if we look at 12, 30, 36, several two item A, it's going to indicate that I need to take six times the diameter of that conductor and add to it the diameter of the conduit. And that gives me 185.45 millimeters, and that would be the minimum width, uh, sorry, minimum depth, dimension A, of this particular box. The next item we're going to look at is dimension B. Now, dimension B when we read in the rule, it's 12, 30, 36, several two item C, Roman numeral one or I. And it says for this one, I need to take six times the trade diameter of my conduit, and that will end up being the minimum length of that box. So six times 78 mil gives me 468 millimeters. Finally, we're going to do dimension C. And again, since we don't have a different size conduit and we don't have any other additional conduits on any of the walls, this dimension ends up being exactly the same as what we calculated for dimension B. So dimension C is also 6 times 78 millimeters, 468. Let's now take a look at a U-pull box. A U-pull box also has two dimensions that we need to calculate, the length of the box A and the distance between the nearest edge of the knockouts, which would be B. If we take a look at the rule that's going to be used for this, it's going to be 12, 30, 36, several two item C, and that's because C says for angle and U-pulls. Now A is going to be item I, the distance of the box, and Roman numeral 2 uh, down here, right, there's Roman numeral 2, that's going to be the distance between the knockouts. Now notice when we read item I, a distance between each raceway or cable entry inside the box and the opposite wall of the box of at least six times the trade diameter of the largest raceway or equivalent cable, comma, plus the sum of the trade diameters of all other raceways or equivalent cables on the same wall of the box. In this situation, we're going to have two conduits on a single wall of the box. And so that will slightly change this calculation in Roman numeral 1. Roman numeral 2 will still remain exactly the same because it is simply based on six times the trade diameter of the raceway. So let's take a look what that calculation will look like. So dimension box A, that would be six times the conduit diameter plus all other conduits on that wall. And then the di distance between the knockouts, that would be six times the conduit diameter. So if we have three in GMT, dimension A is going to be six times three plus three inches, giving me 21 inches minimum box dimension for here. And then for my uh, distance between my knockouts, that would be 6 times 3, which is 18 inches. And that would be the nearest edge of both of those knockouts. Can't be any closer than 18 inches. Let's take a look at another type of pull box. Now would be an angle pull. And again, we have two different dimensions, A and B. A being the uh, distance or length of the box, and B being the distance between the knockouts. We're still using exactly the same rule here, item C, no difference from what we have looked at in either of the previous two examples. And that means the calculation, because we only have one conduit on the uh, side and one conduit on the bottom, looks almost identical to what we did for the pull to the removable cover box. So we have six times the conduit diameter. That would be taken from 3036, several two, item C, Roman numeral one or I. And then double I, the distance between the conduits is again six times the conduit diameter. So let's apply some numbers to this. 
3 and GMT. And that means that for both of these, we're going to have an identical value or distance. And that's going to be 18 inches for both. All right, so the next one would be an angle pull box with multiple conduit angle pulls. So here's an example where I have a whole bunch of conduits on the bottom of the, con of the pull box and a bunch on the right-hand side. And you can see the, the uh, path of the conductors going into each cascading conduit. We need to be able to deal with this and determine what the minimum size of the box is going to be. Now, there's a couple of different situations that we can run into. The one we can run into on the left would be having conduits that are all exactly the same size. And that's where each of the conductors passes into an equivalent uh, conduit. And we can see the dotted red line indicates that. The other situation is when you have different sizes of conduits. So maybe we have one three inch that comes in and then the conductors split out and go into separate smaller conduits. So we're going to deal with these in two separate examples here. Now, both these situations both end up using several C, Roman numeral 1 and 2, but what I'm going to draw your attention to is these passages here that we haven't used up to this point. So when we're looking at Roman numeral 1, it says plus the sum of the trade diameters of the other raceways or equivalent cables on the same wall of the box. And then down here, Roman numeral 2, 6 times the trade diameter of the larger raceway if they are of different sizes. So remember, Roman numeral two has to do with the distance between the knockouts, whereas Roman numeral one has to do with the distance or the length of the box. So let's see how this works. Let's first take a look at the distance between conduits. So this is uh, one inch, one inch, and two inch conduits. And we can see the path of the conductors is given by the red dotted line. And the minimum distance between the conduits is based on that conductor path. So the calculation must be completed three separate times for this type of installation, because the distance between the first two one inch conduits, or dimension A, will be smaller, uh, will be different than the distance between the two two inch conduits. And remember, the calculation that we're doing is the minimum. So this calculation for A will be exactly the same as it is for B, but that's the minimum. Can the distance between this knockout and this knockout be longer than the minimum? Yeah, of course it can. It's a minimum. And C will be a dimension different than A and B, because C is a two-inch conduit. So if we look at that calculation, we're looking at C double I, and uh, C double I simply means uh, we take six times the trade diameter of the conduit. So for both A and B, the minimum dimension is six inches. So we can put them as close as six inches. We can certainly do longer than six inches. And the minimum dimension for C is 12 inches. Now, when we go to calculate the distance or the length of the box, the length of the box only needs to be calculated once. And what I mean is that this distance here is exactly the same as this distance up here. And that's because the same conduit sizes are present on both walls of the box. We've got two one inches and a two inch, two one inches and a two inch. So that means the calculation is using 12, 30, 36, several two items C, Roman numeral one. And it simply says, take six times the largest conduit and add to it the remaining conduits. So it doesn't matter if I'm calculating for this dimension or for this dimension. The distance minimum is 14 inches. Well, let's see how this changes slightly when we have different sizes of conduit. In this situation, my distance between the knockouts is going to be the same minimum value. And that's because we are working with 12, 30, 36, several two items C, Roman numeral two, and the exception that says for the, well, not exception, but the situation where it says, where you have two different conduits, the larger conduit will be used. So the largest conduit between the conductor path here, the one inch conduit in this, the one inch conduit in this, and the two inch conduit is a three inch conduit. It's larger. So we do the calculation once, and what we end up with is 18 inches minimum. It's minimum, 18 inches to any one of these knockouts measured in a straight line shortest distance possible. Can they be longer than 18 inches? Yeah, for sure. You can always go longer, but you can't go shorter. Now, what about the dimension of the box itself? Well, in this situation, this will have, uh, so dimension B, the length, 
and dimension C, the height, will actually have two different minimum dimensions. And that's because there's a different arrangement of conduits on this wall of the box than there is on this wall of the box. So in this situation, one would have to do the calculation twice to determine what the minimum dimensions of the box are. So in the first situation for dimension B, dimension B is pretty straightforward. There's only one conduit, and that's 6 times 3, giving me 18 inches. Whereas this dimension here is based on the conduits on the top wall of the box, and that would be 6 times the largest, plus 1, plus 1. Minimum of 14 inches. So those are the two minimum dimensions of the box. If you wanted to get a square box, then that would mean that the minimum square box you could purchase would be an 18-inch square.